Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
go to the store and the sign says sold out, that means there's nothing else left. So when you talk about the difference between the life you had in the world and the life you now have with Jesus, there's nothing else left in that life that can fit me or compare to my life with Jesus. Who's ready to pray this morning? Who's ready to lift him up this morning? Who's ready to lift up the name of Jesus? Glory to God. We're praying this morning with faith and we're praying with expectancy. There's a story in the Bible where the Lord was praying or beginning to pray, and he said that if you got if you don't have faith, you gotta get out. Anybody that don't have faith right now in what God can do, it's time to get out. It's time to get out. It's time to get out the doubt. It's time to get out the unbelief. It's time to get out the things that used to hold you down. It's time to get them out. So this morning, we're going before the Lord in prayer. That opportunity we have to talk to Jesus. I can talk to my mother. I can talk to my father. I can talk to my friend. But there's no friend like the name that we call Jesus. The Bible says it's a friend that's getting closer than a friend. This morning, those that want to come to the altar, we're inviting you right now. Come to the altar. The word says, leave it at the altar. Leave it there. Because God will answer prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you do. Everything we know is found in your word, and in your word you tell us to look to the hills for which come our help, because our help comes from the Lord. And this morning we look to you, O oh God. We give everything to you. We lay it on your altar this morning. Every time that we come into your house, we should come freely in our spirits. We're putting off the garment of heaviness and we're giving forth the garment of praise. And right now, Lord God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for all that you have done. Because there's no one that can compare to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, this morning, oh God, we pray for those, Lord God, that don't know you. We pray for those, Lord God, that need to be saved. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that the word as it comes forth, that it pricks the hearts of men. That it changes them, Lord God. That it wants them to seek out for the God that can only be the one that will fill all of their voids in their life. We pray, oh God, for those that are sick this morning, Lord. Sister Danielle, oh God, I pray that you touch her where she is. The word says that you are a divine healer. And we pray right now that you lay your hands. We pray right now that you speak to that infirmity. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that deliverance come. Oh, that deliverance come in the name of Jesus. And those, Lord God, that are sick in their bodies, Lord God, there are some also that are sick in their minds and they don't understand that they need a Savior. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you deal with the hearts of men, the minds of men, that you change them right now, that you bless them, Lord God, in a special way. Lord God, those that have prayer requests to you this morning, Lord God, and they are not here and they're not in this house, but they're here, Lord God, through the medium of the airways. I'm praying right now for them. I'm stretching forth my hand to them. And I'm asking you right now to meet every name. I'm asking you right now to deliver, Lord God, in places, Lord God, the secret places of the heart. Those places, oh God, where they need a Savior. I'm praying right now, Lord God, that deliverance come. I'm praying that you bless them, Lord God, and keep them in all that they do. And then, Lord, finally, Lord, in this house, in this house today, I'm praying that your spirit come. I'm praying, Lord God, because we can't do nothing until the Spirit of the Lord comes in this place. And we usher again your spirit. And we're asking you to come. And we're asking you, Lord God, to breathe on us, Lord. Breathe on us this morning with a special anointing. Touch us right now and visit us in this place. Because we do all that we do to glorify you. And we pray right now that you have your way. Be with us this morning, oh God. As we lift you up and glorify your name. Save, heal, and deliver. We bless you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
So if this is God's house, and I'm speaking, I'm not welcoming you here. He is welcoming you here. And if he's welcoming you in his house, he's saying everything is in the house. Do you believe it? If you believe it, say everything is in the house. So do I need healing? Where do I come? If I need deliverance, where do I come? If I need God to change my life, where do I come? In this house. So hopefully you now get it and you now understand that whenever you need it, this is where you come. When I'm heavy, I come to the house. I don't stay home when I'm heavy. When I'm heavy, I come to the house. Because everything is in the house. Amen? Amen, amen. It's offering time. Oh, I got two or three claps. It's offering time. Because I can see through the mask whether you're smiling or not. I can see through the mask if you're excited or not. It's offering time. Amen? Time to give unto the Lord. I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning as it relates to our offering. I'm going to talk a little bit about scripture. Typically when we give the offering, we talk about Malachi. Malachi talks about robbing God, right? We get that. Yes? And then we switch over and we go to Luke, and Luke talks about it being pressed down and shaken together and running over, and many are going to give that into your bosom, right? In my study, I found something a little bit different. I went to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 29 and 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David is talking. Yeah. And David is saying, Moreover, because I have set my affection on yeah. the house of God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have given to the house of my God mm -hmm. over and above, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Yeah. My own special treasure of gold and silver. I can't go into it and teach it, but that's a part of scripture where David was so zealous to want to build the house of God, but the Lord wouldn't let him build it because his hands were dirty because of blood. Because he was a warrior. But he still gave to the house of God and ended up being someone to build the house. And I read this even more and it says, because I have set my affection on the house of God. His affection was not toward things. His affection was toward the house of God. Because the word does say, seek ye the kingdom of God. And all his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you, right? I think David, even back then, understood that principle. Because from my perspective, if I take care of God's house, he's going to take care of my house. I don't have to worry about the electric bill, the light bill, the rising angel going to call me if I take care of God's house. And so that's what I admonish you to do this morning. Take care of the house of God. That's what we're here to do during this time of offering. Amen? We say you can't be God's giving. And I truly believe that. I truly believe that you can't be God's giving. Giving is not a tradition. Giving is not just something that you just do out of habit. But you give from the heart. And so for me and my house, we are a witness to know that when you take care of God's house, God will take care of your house. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you. We thank you, O oh God, for your people that are represented here. They're giving gifts to you in your house. Lord God, we have tilled the ground, and now we're getting ready to sow a seed. But you're the only God that can make it rain. And it doesn't grow until the rain comes. And we pray right now, Lord God, as we give our seeds to be a blessing to the house of God, that you bring up fruit, Lord God, because we do this for the propagation of the kingdom of God, for the winning of souls. And we ask you right now, Lord God, to stretch it, multiply it, God, whatever we would think, because you see the needs down the road. We ask you to have your way. Be the God that we know that you're able to be touched and bless every seed that is given, no matter small or great, and magnify it, and do what you do, and bless your people. We love you, we praise you, and we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for those that are giving...
giving online. I need to make that correction here. Please go to the Givelify app. There should be instructions there on the app to be able to help you to be able to give online and follow those instructions and be a supporter of the house here at the Last Days Church. For those that are in here in the sanctuary, I'm asking everyone on the outer wall, turn to the wall to your left. On this side, turn the wall to your right. And then in the direction of the ushers, you will proceed to the back to give your offering. Be blessed. Better take these people to worship. 
So we went off and we went into worship. And, and see, worship will change the order of service. Do anybody want God to change the order of service? So we started worshiping and we changed the order of service. I said, forget about what we go, used to do. This is what we're going to do now. And we started worshiping. While we were worshiping, a lady came in. She came to about the second or third row. She never took her hand out of her purse. And when she came running in, a big burly fella came in with sunglasses on and a, and a, and a bucket fishing hat. And he never took his hat off. He never took his glasses off. I mean, he, and he never sat down. And God spoke to me again. You better take these people into worship. I went up. We started worshiping. I said, come to the altar. Throw your hands. The people were speaking in tongues. And we were praying for folks. And we were laying hands on folks. And the lady who came in, she ran to the altar and said, Reverend, this good church don't deserve this. I didn't know what she was talking about. And then she said it again. She said, Reverend, this good church don't deserve this. And then she turned and said, because this lady don't deserve to be here because she just got out the bed with my husband. Oh, my God. And I'm, I'm still going on. She runs out the back door crying. I tell the first lady, I said, go get her. The first lady runs outside and goes to get her. She's on the porch crying on the church. She had a nine millimeter in her purse, locked and loaded. And she was getting ready to kill that lady in the middle of our service. But worship killed the spirit of murder. So that's why I need y'all to worship this morning. That's why I need y'all to come on and do what we're supposed to do. I need somebody to lift that voice and to lift their hand. Worship killed the spirit of murder. That day, I realized. God showed me the importance of worshiping when we come in here. When we come in here, we may be going through things. We may be dealing with things. We may not feel the best, but amen, God is still God. And he deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be lifted up. And that's why the Bible said that they that worship him must do it in spirit and in truth. Amen. Give God a praise right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want my worship to kill mother. I want my worship to kill sickness. I want my worship to assassinate depression. I want my worship, hallelujah, to come up to the throne. I want my worship to give God the glory that he so deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We bless the Lord for each and every one of you. Amen. That are in the house of worship. We're going to prepare for the word of God in Jesus' name. We're going to prepare for the word. And the scripture that teaches us that man shall not live by beans alone. By ribs alone. Are y'all here this morning? By bread alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. I don't know about you, but my life is framed founded on preceding words. I want God to continue to talk to me. I want God to continue to speak to me. And sometimes God is speaking and talking to you. And do you know God can talk without never moving his lips? Do you know that there are signs and things all around you that indicate that God is talking to you? Amen. Tell somebody you shouldn't ignore it. You shouldn't ignore it. You shouldn't ignore it. You shouldn't ignore it. Because sometimes the thing that you ignore is the very thing that will save your life. Amen. 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 Sometimes when I'm driving or I'm going somewhere, and I know I'm going and, and I, I know the route that I'm going to take. And sometimes God reroutes me. He just impresses in my spirit in that moment and in that hour to go a different route. And I go a different route later to find out that it was an accident or later to find out somebody got killed over later to find out. So you just never know. Yeah. And I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. Be sensitive yes. when He speaks to you. The other day, God, I was driving 
on, uh, on my way home and God dropped somebody in my spirit that I don't talk to on a regular basis, that I don't speak to on a regular basis. And, that, and let me say something to you. There are some people that you love, and even though you don't talk to them and see them, when you do talk to them and see them, you okay. pick up as if there's been no absence. Right. Those are called life friends. Yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, some people are in your life for a season. Right. Other people are in your life for a reason. Right. Amen. 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 And so, amen, I, uh, this person dropped in my heart and I called him in that moment. I know what God said to me in that moment. I called him. And, and when they picked up the phone, I could tell that I was on time. Amen. I could tell that there was a purpose connected to me. And we fellowship and we laughed and we talked. And they told me that and they said, you know what, Dr. Bell, I appreciate you for calling because this is where I was at. This is what I was dealing with. And, it, and your call was right on time. Yeah. And I said, I know what God put in my heart. He said, yeah. he said you made my day. And that's what God dropped in my spirit. I need to make his day. Yeah. I just need to let him know that somebody is thinking about him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Tell somebody, somebody thinking about you. Somebody thinking. Come on, tell them. Somebody thinking about you. And he ain't just thinking. We also pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I love that old song. We need to get some old school stuff. Somebody oh, yeah. prayed for me. Yeah. Somebody had me on their mind. Somebody said they took the time to pray for me. Oh, come on, somebody. Then what did they say? I'm so glad they prayed. Oh, I'm so glad they prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Get your Bibles. Go with us to the book of Luke. Those of you who know me, I've been being laconic in that. I've been being brief with how much we put on the screen, but I can't help myself but be contextual. Laconia is the ancient city where the Spartans were from. And they were laconic, they were terse, they were short, they didn't speak very many words, and they did it. Uh, so that people would uh, look at them as being intellectual or mysterious. I'm doing it because I'm trying to save time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But go with me to the book of Luke. <clears throat> Chapter number 16. And I'm going to interject this. I may not finish it, but I told you on Wednesday, and I say it now, we are never finished because we are tapping into an inexhaustible resource. Yeah, right. We never finish. We never finish. I'm just learning how to quit. Amen. I'm learning how to stop. Amen. 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 And I want you to know this morning that the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that victory is yours. I'm, Amen. I'm talking to a couple people right now. Amen. I just don't want to call you out because I'm on camera. I'm talking to a couple of you right now. You here, and you are in the place of victory. You here, and God knows what he's doing. And you need to let God be God. Somebody need to let God be God. Somebody need to let God be God. Not a man, not a woman, not, not somebody else, not even a pastor. Let God be God. Amen. Luke chapter 16. And as, as I said, I'm going to be Brief, verse 11. And it starts out with a contingency. Oh, we're going to have a little church. The elder just walked in. The elder just walked in. The Lord blessed in Jesus' name. I just thought about him. God is so good. I just thought about him. I just thought about him. Amen. 16 and 11, Luke. If Contingency. Contingency. Life is full of contingencies. Life is full of ifs. Y'all ain't saying that too. He says, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner. Manner is not a slice of baloney. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Amen. It says, who will commit to your trust the true 
riches. Can you read it for me, please, in Jesus' name? Luke 16 and 11, everybody in concert, go. If therefore we have not been faithful in the who will commit to your trust the true riches? And this morning, I want to speak to you about secret riches. I want to speak to you about secret riches. Tell somebody, I'm going to find the secret riches. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need, I need y'all to get interactive and, and engaged in here. Ain't no, amen, we ain't killing no donkeys and ain't nobody going to sleep. Amen. I'm going to say that again. We ain't killing no donkeys and ain't nobody going to sleep. Amen. We're going to tap into the secret riches this morning. In Jesus. Give God a praise if you want to tap into secret riches. Come on. Come on. I said a praise. Bless the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Secret riches. All right. I bless God this morning in Jesus' name yes. for the richness of my life. Thank you, Lord. And I want to expand your paradigm when it comes down to what you think riches are. All right, teach us. Because most people, in a general sense and in an ecumenical sense, when they hear riches, most people are myopic in their thought. They only think about money. And they only think about material things. But there is a secret to riches. That is not material at all. Yeah, all, right, all right. And that's what I want to tap into those secret riches. Those riches that far extend somebody's ability to purchase or to buy. Because right. some things you cannot buy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing yeah. to me. You can't buy joy. Uh-huh. You can buy a fun time, but you can't buy joy. And, and, and you got to understand that joy and happiness is not the same thing. Has anybody ever been in a bad situation, but you felt the joy of the Lord? Oh, I wish I had a witness in this house this morning. Secret riches. I, I hope I can articulate it at least Lay the foundation to get you there. So I said I was going to be laconic or brief. And I am, but I have to be contextual with this scripture. Right, man. Because I say this all the time. Truth taken out of context is not truth. Yes, because it has been diluted. The power of it, the essence of it. Amen. Uh, the moral has been changed because yeah. when you take it out of its setting, it no longer has the same impact Amen. that it was designed to have. Right. And so when you look at this particular group of scriptures, and I don't do all of them, he has been telling a story or a parable or parabolo, which is the Greek term, and it literally means he has taken a natural story and laid it beside a spiritual story, and he started to give you insight into that natural story that you might grasp the spiritual truth. Amen? And so he teaches them a parabolo, a parable about a steward. And the steward has manipulated some of the bills, and the steward has moved some stuff around, and he led us to understand that oftentimes the people in the world are smarter than the people in the church. Oh, y'all ain't saying that y'all a little bit quiet. But I'm from Detroit. You ain't going to burn me. Amen. I know how to walk on both sides of the streets. I've been there and I've done that. 
Amen. And you know what I found out? The problem is that sometimes we become so spiritually minded that we forget to operate in the world. We forget to navigate in the world. And the Bible has encouraged me to be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Which means that I need to understand how the enemy operates. I need to understand how the enemy works. Why? Because we are not ignorant of his devices. Because if I'm ignorant of his devices, the Bible said that he will get the advantage over me. Uh, God, God has brought me this far for the devil to beat me now. God has opened these doors for the devil to defeat me now. I wish I had somebody in this church that would say hallelujah right now and let God know I thank you for what you brought me to. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for the way that you made. And I'm going to put the devil up under my feet. Somebody stomp your foot and put him up under your feet. That's where he belongs. Yeah, you better hear me. He don't belong on your back. He don't belong in your mind. He don't belong under your amen life. He belongs under your feet. Look at the first prophetic word. The word came and let that woman know that your seed is going to prove his head. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Somebody need to stop about three times and tell the devil that I got you up under my feet. That the Holy Ghost is going to hold you down. That the Lord is going to work it out for me. Give God a praise in this house. I need about 30 seconds of praise to recalibrate this atmosphere. Come on. I need about 30 seconds of praise to recalibrate the glory. Come on. I need about 30 seconds of praise to recalibrate how we move forward. Come on. I didn't come in here to be sad. The devil is alive. I didn't come in here to get defeated. But God don't function in faithfulness like that. You got to show up when you ain't got no position. You got to show up when you ain't got no responsibility. Now here again, that's all you got to name your faithfulness. Hallelujah. But God commits faithful things to faithful people. That's according to the word of God. So he begins to talk to them about being faithful. Yeah. And he brings out something that challenged me some years ago, early on in my walk with God and early on in my ministry. He says this, I, I ain't got time to go through all of it, but uh, we're talking about secret riches. Because there's some stuff you can't buy. Yeah. And there's some stuff you can't get on credit. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all like saying that too. Yeah. Mm. I want you to get this. So let me let me drop down. And he says in verse 10, 
He that is what? Faithful in that which is least. Yes. See, oftentimes people want you to give them big stuff, but you ain't took care of the little stuff. Right. That's right. Ooh. Why should God give you a better car when you won't take care of the one that you cried for? Why should God give you a better house? When you won't maintain where you live at now. Hello? Part of maintaining what God has given you is a part of gratitude back to him. Where you let him know I appreciate it even though it ain't a means yet. So he says, he that is faithful in that which is least <clears throat> is what? Faithful also in much. So guess what? Faithfulness becomes the foundation. Uh -huh. yes. It is not how little or how much. Right. It is the quality or the virtue of being faithful. Amen. Tell somebody, be faithful, be faithful, be, be, faithful. be faithful. Show up when don't nobody else show up. Do what's supposed to be done when won't nobody be with you. Be faithful. Because guess what? Faithfulness is as unto God. It ain't as unto man. Let me move, let me move, because the same way I want to get stuck at. He says, he that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful, amen, in that which is much. And he that is what? If you crook it with a little. You stole all the Snickers. <laughs> so I know if, you, if I leave the safe open, you're going to steal some dollars. <laughs> Hello? Because a thief is a thief. And one of my boys used to say, a moocher is a moocher. He a moocher if you let. <laughs> Always got a story. I gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> you know, Wimpy was a mooch. Every cartoon you see Wimpy in, he has him for a burger and he's going to pay you later. He's a mooch. Mm. Mm. Moochers never tap into secret riches. Mm. Let, let, me, let me take you a little bit further. Secret riches, secret, secret riches. So he says, if therefore. You have not been faithful in the what? Unrighteous what? Yeah. That didn't say salam. It said man. Uh -huh. And a lot of us just read and don't take the time. See, part of the riches is understanding. Yeah. Right? And all you're getting, get an understanding. Hello? I ain't trying to make you preach. I'm trying to make you rich. Yeah. I mean, I ain't trying to make you shout. I'm trying to make you rich. Hello? Because I felt something the other day. The Lord blessed me. The Lord blessed me. I got up. I woke up late. That's the, that's the boy. I got ready and I'm in the house the fastest ever. I didn't I was shouting myself. <laughs> I ain't pants a shirt. Amen. Took a shower, brushed my teeth. I mean, got ready. Was I, I was like, whoa. He need to get up like this all the time. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have the time that I normally have uh, to do what I do in the morning because I kind of take my time to get a scripture, get a get a get a, uh, a word for the day. That's where I got that word this morning from. Amen. It was a couple of days ago. I said, "Oh, I like this word. Let me hold on to this." Amen. So you know, I try to do all that. I couldn't do it, so I had to do it in the car. So I was going down the road. You know, scripture was talking to me. I was looking at my dictionary. I was getting my philosophical quotes, and then I started praying. And I said, God bless me today. Help me to bless somebody else. Help me to do what I need to do. So and so and so, blah, blah, blah. Help me to be a blessing, you know, enrich my life. Blah, blah, blah. Got to work. Did. Started doing it. Gentleman came and I took care of him. Did what we needed to do. When he got ready to leave, he said, Man, you've been such a blessing to me. 
So what are you doing? That's what I do. Ain't no big thing. I was just being me. Right? Then he pulled a roll of 20s out. Now, I done already made money because we did business. Right? I'm content with that. Caleb, he slapped the twenties up there on my desk. He said, put them in your pocket, man. I said, you ain't got to do that. He said, yes, I do. And when he said that, I heard God say, yes, he do. And I said, well, hallelujah. <laughs> but it wasn't the money. Because I, I say this gingerly because some people thinking that, that I'm pumping so arrogant. I didn't need the money. Hello? It wasn't about the money. What I needed was the mental and the spiritual transaction because it was a richness that God was sharing with me that I still have and that I'm releasing upon me that money cannot buy. Because I, I told him, I, I told him, I said, you don't realize what you just did. I said, you just validated the favor that's on my life. I said, you just validated that God is still watching me the way that I want you. See, there are some riches that you cannot put a price on. So, he says this. Let me get back to it. I know I jumped the fence. He says, unrighteous in, uh, in unrighteous man. Well, faithful in un unrighteous man. Mammon is riches. Mammon is money. Mammon is treasure. Mammon is prosperity. But I want you to understand something. It comes from the Greek word mammonos, which means money, treasure, or it is personified riches that oppose God. Mm, that's good. This is where it gets deep at. Yeah. Personified riches or in the embodiment of riches that oppose God, which means that it is riches and prosperity that God is not the center of. It is riches and prosperity that people don't care what they do to get it. They just want it. Oh, my God. And you got to understand that people that get riches that way are poor in their spirit. People that get riches that way, they don't understand what riches really are. They don't. Have you ever seen somebody that got money that had a poor mentality? Have you ever seen somebody that was well to do and they might as well live down in the projects? Because they had a broken spirit, a broken mindset, and a broken outlook on life. Oh, my God. And so he says this. He says, if therefore you have not been faithful in that, he says, who will commit to you the true riches? So now you got to understand that God has this, amen, qualified what true riches is. It is not natural stuff. It is not just money and a house and a BMW and, and suburban living and Gucci shoes. It ain't just that. And I ain't saying that it ain't that because I got some myself and I want some more. But that ain't what my objective is. Can I tell you this? That kind of stuff is just a byproduct of my rich life. That kind of stuff is because I'm connected to the one who is the blesser and not the blessing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That kind of stuff is on the map. And let me say something to you. Don't chase up the money. Don't chase up the pain. Why? Because what does it profit a man to get the whole world and to lose it on the show? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You know what I found out? Uh, God, when you really serve God, you ain't got to chase after money. Uh, or you ain't got to chase after riches. Or you ain't got to chase after stuff. Because when you get in the right place with God, the Bible says that I bless you in the city. I bless you in the fear. I bless you lying down. And I bless you rising up. Somebody holler out on bless.
Thank you, Lord. Natural stuff yes. is nice. Yes. But I want to let you know, spiritual stuff is priceless. The richness of your character is worth more than, ne than the necklace on your neck. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hello? The depth of your person, the quintessential essence of who you are, yes. is more valuable than the three carat diamond that you have on your finger. Yes. Hello? I want to talk to you about secret riches, real riches. Because a lot of people are superficial and we got all nice things and we got nice stuff, but we're poor in our spirit, we're poor in our heart. We don't understand the principles of God. Mm. True riches. He says something else. Look at this, verse 12. He says, and if ye have not been faithful in that what? That's another man. Mm. Just taught me something. Just taught me something. Before you can come into your kingdom, sometimes you got to help other people get to there. Before God will release on you, He uses other people's stuff to validate if you're worthy. Y'all don't say nothing to me. Hello? Sometimes God allows you to be a steward over somebody else's stuff so that it wants you, amen, figure out what real stewardship is. Then God starts to release on you what's going to be yours. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. See, a lot of people want to just jump and get there, but sometimes you got to learn how to serve other people. You got to learn how to be humble under them. You got to learn how to follow orders. You got to learn how, amen, to be subject. Some people ain't never going to be rich because can't nobody tell you about that. I got a history. You don't talk to me like that. Really? I remember a story of a wealthy preacher. Apostolic Pentecostal, full of the Holy Ghost. He got married to a prominent lady. She was getting ready to go. And she had a limo driver. This is how prominent she was. But she was poor in her spirit. So he kissed her. And she got in the car. And he said, baby, you got money? Yeah, I got money. He said, how much you got? Don't ask me how much money I got. She went off on me. You know, she blew it. Because you know why he was asking? He didn't want to know just how much she had for the sake of knowing. He wanted to know because if there was anything lacking, he was going to give it to her. She was getting ready to go on a shopping trip. And when she went off on him and said all that, he said, okay, you got to know. But he was getting ready. See, it's the difference in being able to go to the north and get one pair. <laughs> but see, some, some people ain't ready to go in and say, I want every car. You ever did that the same shoe in every car? Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> I had a homeboy. He, he, he is the reason that I am in love with sartorial things now. He's deceased. We called him Bro Howard. When I was a young lad, we would go shopping with him and I would carry his bags. And after I carry his bags, he'd buy me some shoes or a shirt. Or he'd buy me some. He'd go in the store and he was he was somewhat not crippled, but he was somewhat uh, not uh, totally uh, able. And he'd shut the store down. I'm talking about they would close the front door. Four salesmen would be waiting on him. He would sit down. Those dollars, I want to give them to me in Burger, give them to me in Carmen. You think I should get the great ones? He just called me Mr. Planners. Mr. Planners, you think I should get the great ones? I said, yeah. Give me the great ones and the Burger. He'd get them in every color. You follow what I'm saying? And so 
The lady didn't understand that her husband was asking her a question not for what she didn't have, for what he was going to release on. Y'all got to catch that. Y'all got to catch that. So, if you have, verse 12, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who should give you what's your own? Somebody say, I'm ready for my own. I'm ready for my own. <clears throat> now, now, now. Let me help you on getting to some secret riches. The secret to getting into riches and God in here again, don't be myopic. Don't have a narrow train of thought. Because I'm not just talking about money. That's the wrong with the church now. All we preach is a blessing and a breakthrough and this and that. But can I tell you this? If you develop your character, if you develop who you are, riches and breakthrough going to come to you. Hello? If you develop your character and you get rid of poverty thinking and poverty attitudes, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. If you get rid of those kind of things, God will enrich you to the degree that he don't mind releasing on you naturally. Because if you got a poor mentality, you ain't going to be able to keep rich stuff anyway. Mm. Secret riches. Let me show you something. It's a paradox in the kingdom. What do you mean paradox, pastor? It's opposite. It, it, it's really weird. It's really funny. And we found this out by looking at Jesus. Humbling himself. Yes. Mm. Being in the form of God. Thinking it not robbery to be equal with God. Yes. But making himself of no reputation. Cannot own emptying himself. Neutralizing his external glory. And see, that's the whole God. I want you to understand. You can take the Versace that somebody's wearing. You can take the divinity that they got on. But guess what? You can't take the virtue that's in my spirit. You cannot take it. Amen. And guess what? I might lose natural things. But if I got spiritual riches on the inside, I got the ability to get in the game. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. That's why we don't worry about houses. We don't worry about cars. I can lose a car. I can lose a house. I can get that again. What I don't want to lose is his glory. What I don't want to lose is his anointing. What I don't want to lose is his favor. Proverbs, Proverbs, real quick. Chapter 13. Let me just share this with you. And I got to get on this train a little bit. And I said I was going to introduce it. Because I'm trying to get you to a rich place. Proverbs 13 and 7. Look at what it says, Mother O'Neill. Look at, look at what this says. It's a paradox. It says, There is that maketh himself rich. What? He rich, but he ain't got nothing. I mean, think about that for a minute. How many people are out here right now have things but don't have nothing? Think about that. Got a custom-made mattress, $20,000, but can't sleep. Little walking around the bed. <laughs> Ain't got nothing. Hello? $50,000 watch on. But out of time. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Ain't got nothing. Then look what it says, Kathy. It says, There is he that maketh himself poor. But yet, he has great riches. And I ain't going to go through all of it, but I'm going to share this with you. In a few places, part of you tapping into secret riches is emptying yourself and denying yourself. Why? It's a paradox. Why? You lose your life, you find it. Hello? 
You try to save your life, you lose it. It's, it's, it's a kingdom paradox. See, one mindset is the way the world thinks. I'm going to save my life, I'm going to keep my life. Well, the kingdom is opposite to the world. Mm. Secret riches. So, the riches, what they call riches is not rich at all. It's the riches that God called riches that we ought to be working toward. It's the riches that God called riches that we need to be, amen, tapping into. And I want you to understand something. Let me throw you, amen, let me jump a fix real quick. Let me throw you some bell theology. This is one of my bell isms. There are theistic virtues that make you rich that are priceless. There are theistic virtues that make you rich that are priceless. What, I, what do I mean by that? There are qualities and traits that you only get out of the spirit of God. You cannot pay for them. You cannot buy them. You cannot borrow them. You got to live them. You got to add to them. And these are the type of virtues, amen, that make you so rich that they are priceless. Now, what do I mean that they are priceless? When something is priceless, it literally means that we have no value system by which we can estimate how much it's really worth. We have no point of reference to say that it's worth $500 million or it's worth $200 million. It is priceless. We cannot put a price on it. I can tell you this. There are some virtues that come from God. There are some things that come from God. You can't get it in the world. You can't get it at Harvard. You can't get it at Stanford. You cannot go to Morehouse or any other school of higher learning and get these virtues. These virtues come from getting on your face and on your knees. These virtues come from having a true relationship with God. These are when God begins to deposit the nuggets of glory into your spirit, the nuggets of glory into your heart. Do anybody want real riches? Do anybody want real virtue? Do anybody want real glory? I've got somebody saying, I want the real stuff. I got y'all ain't saying nothing. I want the real stuff. Oh my God, I don't want some silver. And it's supposed to be gold. Y'all ain't saying. Uh, I don't want zirconium when it's supposed to be a diamond. But I want the riches that come from God. Watch your approach. You know why? You know why you got to watch your approach? The reason you got to watch your approach is because we'll be working for natural stuff, killing our spiritual self, neglecting our spiritual self, and all the while we're getting stuff, we're becoming more poor. And it's a terrible thing to see somebody who's supposed to be rich, but you see the nakedness of their poverty. You know, sometimes we in the new church, we think we've arrived. We, we like Laodicea. We think we're rich. We think we don't need nothing. And you know what Jesus told the Laodicean church? And, and this is what the problem is right now. And I don't care about being politically correct. Because Laodicea was a compounded word. It literally meant the right of the people. And sometimes we're so concerned about people that we don't preach the true gospel. Sometimes we're so concerned about people that we don't give them the naked truth. Hello? There are certain things that are wrong, and I don't care who you are. I'm going to tell you that it's wrong. There's certain things that I don't go for, and I don't care who you are, I'm going to tell you that I don't go for that. Amen. Hello? The right of the people, lay over the seal. They thought they was rich. They thought they was close. They thought they had it going on. And, and the Lord said, you know what? I counsel y'all to try me gold, to buy me gold tried in the fire. He said, I counsel y'all to get some eye salve so that you can see, and your neck and this don't appear to be for yourself. It's a terrible thing to think you dress. Ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, my slip is short. You let your slip be short and mess up the rest of your day. I was in front of me. My slip was short. That was five hours ago, girl. Get over it. You've never seen slips before. 
Hello? I remember we was doing some outreach work one time. Sister was with us, and we was getting ready to do some more outreach work. Looked down, slipped around her ankles. We said, huh? <laughs> I gotta be spiritual. Okay? I want you to get this. Because sometimes the Bible teaches us in the book of Matthew don't just work and labor for stuff that's going to rust and it's going to wear out. He says where thieves do break through and steal and where moths eat it up. He said, but what? Lay up for yourself treasures. The sorest treasures, the Greek word for treasures, the sorest. The Greek word for treasure. Lay up for yourself treasures where? In over and over. In heaven. I'm going to stop after I say this. It says this. And guess what? You cannot watch a person too long and don't find out what their passion is in. Amen. Because the Bible says that where your treasury is, is where your heart will be also. Hello? All you got to do is listen to people. You can tell where they are. You can tell. All you got to do is just sit back and listen. They're going to tell you what they like, and they're going to tell you what they don't like. They're going to let you know what's important to them. Hello? But I want us to tap into spiritual riches, secret riches. Yes. I, I ain't going to mess up because I ain't finished, but I want to throw something out. But I, but I ain't going to mess it up. I ain't in a rush. I'm going to quit right now. But I want you to understand something. There is a depth of character that is so rich that when you interact with people, you leave the residue of your richness on them. Hello? It's like you shake their hand, and when they walk away, your DNA is on them. Did you catch what I just said? The DNA is divine nature anointing. Right? Ah, God, God bless you. I hope, I hope you grab that. God wants to enrich his people. Why? Because we're supposed to be the son of the earth. We're supposed to leave influence. We are supposed to make people thirsty. Because salt produces thirst. That's what it does. Hello? So you, you need to make people thirsty that when they get through talking to you, they, they say, I want to drink from God's well. And we already know, oh, taste and see, yeah. that the Lord is good. Amen. And blessed is the man that trusts in him. I, I hope you get this today. I hope you will allow this to, 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 as you ruminate on it, as you chew on it, as you look at it, that it will begin to enrich your character. Because guess what? The, the, the anthropic man, which is Jesus, being God incarnate. Yeah. Mm. Didn't have a place to lay his head. Didn't have anything. Foxes have holes and right. birds have nests. Right. But the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. But guess what? He has some riches. Yeah. And because of the riches that he had, you and I can be rich right now. Because of the riches that he had, he wants to release and share those with us. And guess what? Because we are connected to him, we heirs and joint heirs, you're supposed to be rich. Yeah. Amen. So God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Put your hands together. Give God a praise in Jesus' name. Super rich. I'll pick back up because i got some more stuff to share with you. Yeah. And I want you to recognize this. Being a pastor is not always just making you feel good. It's challenging you. It, it's, it's trying to nurture you to develop a desire to go higher and deeper in God. Just as in the natural, you want your children to learn. You want your children to become intelligent and to become self-sufficient. Guess what? Because as your children learn, they're getting psychologically richer. 
As they learn, they start to articulate thought. Their vocabulary is becoming richer in Jesus' name. That's what I'm trying to do for you. And guess what? When you become rich, you ain't always got to call somebody. Amen, amen. So God bless you. That's my point. Those of you that are watching, those of you that are tuned in, we pray that you, amen, will become spiritually rich, that you tap into the secret riches in Jesus' name. And as always, myself, the last day's church family, and First Lady Bell, we miss you, we love you, and we are praying for you in Jesus' name. Put your hands together. To All right. Bless the Lord. Amen. We thank God in this house in Jesus' name.